Okay, so the next piece we're going to get into are some of the interior finishes and that sort of thing. So um, if I go to my floor plan here, um, I'm going to keep these sections in place because I'm probably going to need them, and I'll probably need a few more as well just so I can get the views that I need uh, to see different, different things as I'm moving through this. So what I have planned out here for my kitchen, I've kind of I've got my sort of refrigerator over here. Um, probably do my sink in front of the window here, um, and then I'll have a a run of cabinets that kind of runs down through here, uh, and has my my range um, in between here. So um, if I have a 30 inch range, I'll end up with something kind of like this. So that'll be my range, and I'll have cabinets on either side there um, that I can kind of work with here. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. So Revit does have some uh, some casework in here. So if I go into load family um, and go to casework, I can see base cabinets and see what all they have. Um, if you're looking to do any sort of decent looking kitchen these probably aren't going to do it for you um, these are incredibly stock looking um, casework uh, they don't have great details to them or anything like that and if you want to do anything other than just a flat door uh, you're probably going to have to make it yourself so what we're going to do is we're going to go through the process of building our own um, custom cabinetry here and how we go about um, making those sorts of details uh, to make to make this sort of thing kind of stand out and pop. So one thing that I know I'm going to need, I'm going to be using doing extrusions and sweeps, much like I, I did on the outside um, for some of those details. Uh, I'll be getting into um, into both of those tools pretty uh, extensively. So. I'm going to need views that give me access to um, the work planes that I need to operate with those. So I'm going to have I'm going to pull this section back this way just a little bit, so that way I'll be able to see all the way down the line there. Um, I have this section here, which I'll pull forward a little bit, so I'll have access to that one, and I'll do another one here, so I have access to look at the the face of this these cabinets along here. Um, so that should give me most of the views that I'll need for this. So if I go in and I'll do the the sink wall first and then we'll get over to that side. So the first thing I'll, I'm gonna want to bring in my sink first that way I, I have something um, to kind of work off of. So I'm gonna load in plumbing, architectural fixtures, sinks, and I will do I'm just going to do a single uh, basin sink here. I'm going to open this up and it brings in a 30 by 21 sink which should be just fine and I'm going to align the center of this so that it's centered on my window and then I'm going to just rotate this around here and move this into place. Okay, so I have my my sink here and I want to make sure that off of this let's give myself at least an inch and three quarters there okay now I probably don't want this generic faucet here um, so if I edit the family of this you can see this is pretty bland um, I have some better faucets than that and if I want this to be an undermount sink this probably isn't going to work because this is sitting right on top of this uh, this edge here. So I'm going to just delete these and then load this back into my project and I'll overwrite the existing. And it keeps the line work there because in this family, once I delete it, if I go to my reference level, it this is all just line work that's in here to basically um, basically give you the look of the, the faucet in a simplified form. Um, in your plan view. That way you don't have a bunch of detail and stuff to it that you don't want. Um, so it's going to keep this, but for right now I'm not too worried about that sort of stuff. Um, if you really want to get rid of it, you can come in and just grab all of this line work, delete that, and then 
actually I probably don't want to delete the drain portion so I will go ahead and just delete those pieces and load into project and you'll see that stuff goes away um, now we've got an issue of this little gap here you could go in and change the line work there and combine those two but it's not going to be a big deal once I put another faucet in here that'll cover that little spot okay so now I have my my uh, sink in here so if I go to this view I can click on it and hit go to view now I can see um, what I'm looking at here I've got my my windows there and here's my sink I want to make sure that I get this positioned at the right level so I'm actually going to grab the very top of this uh, basin here and move it down to my floor level and then the bottom of my countertop is going to be at two foot ten and a half so that moves that up into place and then my countertop will sit right on top of that um, so it'll be like an undermount sink now I have my floor level I've got my ceiling level so I have some reference planes uh, to go off of here um, you can see I'm cutting through my my walls there so if I change this to fine it'll poche all of that stuff for me so I can kind of see um, a little bit better what's going on there um, I'm going to actually right click and hide that category in view so I can get rid of some of the some of the kind of excess that I'm not going to need and then I'm going to bring this down and this up that way I'm focused just on what I need to um, need to see here. Um, okay, so getting into the cabinetry portion of this, I'm going to go to architecture, component, model in place, and this is going this is going to be casework. So I'll hit OK, and I'm going to name this kitchen cabinetry. And this is all going. I'm going to model this all as one big kind of model in place family. Um, if you don't want uh, that to be the case you can model each individual one hit the check mark and then copy it across but I find that it works a little better for me if I model it all um, together because if one de if a detail or something changes I don't want to have to back out each time and go through and adjust every single one um, you may find it beneficial to make uh, parametric families of different types of cabinets um, if you use the same type of cabinet over and over again that might be useful uh, it's not so useful to me um, where I work we do a lot of custom cabinetry of all different styles um, so it would just be incredibly cumbersome to try and make uh, cabinetry families that include one drawer two doors one drawer one door um, you know three drawers two drawers and a door uh, you know and then all of those variations of those with different door styles drawer styles and everything from raised panel to flat panel to recess panel to cope and stick to all of that sort of stuff it just gets to be a massive folder of different cabinet tree and that sort of stuff and once you've done this a few times you'll get pretty quick at it and now I can typically model a uh, a single cabinet faster than I would probably be able to go into my my library that included all of those families and figure out which one is the one that I needed. So, and then obviously adjust it and everything to the size that I need. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in, hit extrusion, and pick a plane, and I'm going to grab the face of this wall so if I come up here to the edge here and hit tab I can grab the face of that wall and my countertop is going to be at three foot tall but like I said before um, the bottom of the cabinets at two foot ten and a half and then I'll have an inch and a half for my granite to sit on top of that so I want to kind of lay this out and figure out exactly where everything is going to end up falling so I'm going to take this and mirror that across. So this is going to basically be my run of cabinets here. And I'll have my my toe kick sit four inches off of the floor here. So the face of my cabinets will be there and then my toe kick will recess back three inches from there. So my my sink basin 
is going to be my my first kind of thing that I want to kind of deal with. So I have a 30 inch sink, so I'm going to need a sink basin that's a little bit larger than that because the sides of my cabinet are going to return back. So if I give myself say an inch on either side, that'll be my my sink basin there. Um, I'll probably do like a, a drawer and two doors down below that. Uh, and then it looks like I've got about 42 inches on either side here to work with. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to include a dishwasher on one side. So dishwasher will be t two feet. And then I'm going to mirror that across. And I'm going to do a big trash can roll out on this side. Um, depending on whether the person's left-handed or right-handed, those might switch. Um, so then that leaves me with about 18 and a half inches on either side. Uh, so what I'm what I'm going to do because this is I'm going to we'll say I'm designing this for me. I'm right-handed, so my dishwasher will go on the right-hand side here, um, and then my my trash can rollout will go on this side. Uh, I have a detail that I personally like the looks of um, when it comes to appliances that kind of push back in between cabinetry and stuff. I don't like to see the sides of the vent and that sort of thing um, down at the bottom. So I like to have a little three quarter um, leg on either one of these. So if I move this over here and do a three quarter on that side, and then if I take all of that and mirror it across this side so I get a nice symmetrical look to this. Um, I'll end up with something like that and that leaves me 17 inches for my cabinet and then I'll do a set of maybe this side I'll do three drawers on either side so I'll get in, uh, quite a few drawers on this side and then the other side will be more like pots and pan storage with big doors and that sort of stuff. So. Now getting into this, now that I have this kind of figured out how I want to lay this out, I need to kind of draw in my uh, my style and my rail and that sort of stuff. I'm going to do inset doors. It's a little more, little more complicated in terms of uh, drawing stuff um, and modeling it, but better to show you something that's a little more complicated than, than the super simple stuff. So what I'm going to do is, if this is going to be my dishwasher, this portion is going to be cut out so I won't need that and I'm going to go ahead and grab that piece and I will grab this piece and the little three-quarter legs will be something that I model outside of this because they're going to be on a different plane um, than the rest of them and so I'm going to trim this up here so I get basically the face frames of all of these figured out in one sketch. Okay, so now I have uh, the basic shapes that I've got here, so I'm going to take my uh, rectangle tool and I personally usually go with about an inch and three quarters for my styles. So I'm going to sketch that in and then I'm going to end up with three drawers on this side. So I'll draw basically the openings for the three drawers there. This is my trash can rollout. It'll be one big door. And then this is going to be a drawer front. It'll be a fake drawer front because of the sink. And then my, uh, my two doors down below. And then this over here is going to be the exact same as this. So I'm just going to grab this whole thing and mirror this across. So now that I have those, I can start setting some dimensions and that sort of thing. So I'm going to grab this and make sure that this is all lined up with everything there. And I'm going to grab all of these and activate dimensions. And I want this to be, let's say, I want, I'm probably not going to do, since this is going to be kind of a rustic interior, I'm not going to go crazy and do like a cabinet bead detail or anything like that. Um, it'll just be like a recessed. Uh, drawer front um, and I'll show you a couple different uh, door styles uh, throughout this so that way you can kind of see how different door styles and things like that you can make 
So I'm going to say this is a five and a half inch opening there. Uh, and then I'll need to grab these. And I'm going to do two uh, equidistant um, drawers on the bottom. So there will be nine inch openings for those. So I've got all of this kind of laid out the way I want. And I've got my openings for my doors, my drawers, all of that sort of stuff uh, figured out. Now coming over here, if we expand this a little bit and pull this back just a little bit so we can see a little bit more. Um, I've got my material, I've got all of my extrusion start and end just like before, uh, but my work plane is the, the actual wall. So these cabinets are going to be two feet deep and then the face frames are three quarters of an inch thick. So I'll end up with something like that. So it'll, the back of the face frame will be one foot eleven and a quarter off the wall, the front will be two feet, so that'll give me my two foot depth um, for the cabinets there. I'm going to change the material and I'm going to just apply a whoops, kitchen cabinets material and we'll figure out what the color and all of that's going to be later. So now that I have this, uh, this figured out, I've got my material applied, I've got my dimensions applied, I've got all of my uh, dimensions in my sketch figured out, I can hit my green check mark and it makes my, my extrusion there um, for it. So if I go to my interior view, you can see I've got some, some face frames and stuff kind of showing up there. Now, getting into the doors and the drawer fronts, I'm going to create another extrusion. I'm going to pick a plane, and this time I'm just going to select the face, um, the face frames that I just made so I can work off of that. And I'm going to create, take my uh, rectangle tool, and I don't like my, I like to see a little bit of a line there, a tiny bit of shadow, uh, just because your, your drawers are never going to fit, if, you know, perfectly tight, otherwise they'll end up rubbing, so I'm going to give a sixteenth of an inch space here around the edges. So I'm going to go through and say this is the exterior of my drawers and my doors. And now since this is a double door, I'm going to go to the center point here. And if I grab the center point again, I'll end up with a little eighth inch reveal in the middle, but that ends up looking just fine. And I'll do the same over here. So now that I've got all of these uh, drawer fronts and door fronts figured out, um, I want to know what are my what are my style and rail on my my drawer fronts going to be. So I'm going to use these two doors here as an example of a couple different um, door styles, and then use this as another another example. So. I think I'm probably going to go with something real simple, like just a recessed flat panel on this in terms of the overall look. So if I go negative two inches here on my style and rail, that should be pretty good as far as proportions there. And I'll go around to these ones so I'm gonna do the doors or the drawers um, basically the way that I want them to look and I'll use those uh, other ones as examples of other styles to show you guys that okay so this is getting a little this is only an inch and three eighths um, that's getting a little tight as far as getting like a handle or a, a knob or something like that in there so instead of two inches I'm gonna say those are inch and a half and I'll do the same for the bottom ones I'll just grab that and move that down a half inch so that gives me a little more room to get a handle or a, or a knob in there okay so for one of these one of these I'll show like a cope and stick kind of option so I'm gonna say two and an eighth here and then the the cope is going to be three eighths of an inch thick, so that'll end up giving me two and a half inches to where the panel starts. This one I will show a um, a raised panel, so how to do a raised panel, but that's actually going to be uh, a void. So I'll show you that one, and then this one over here, 
I'm going to say, we'll say just two inches for, actually we'll go two and a quarter because I'm going to have a quarter inch overlap. And this will be like a Belection molding, like molded door. So now that I've got all of that kind of put in there, my work plane is the face frame. So I want these to be even with the front of the face frame and then they're going to be three quarters of an inch thick. So now that I've got that, I can hit my check mark and it puts those in there. This looks a little goofy because I'm doing different stuff here. So the first thing I'll show is the, the coping stick. I'll start this way and move my way this direction. So if I go to sweep, I'm going to hit sketch a path and pick a plane. I'm going to pick the, the face frame here. And then I'm just going to draw a rectangle around the edge of that opening. And I'm going to take my, my work plane and pull this so that I can draw on it in plan view rather than going to a section view and sketching it that way. Um, for whatever reason, I just pr I like drawing down on the, on the plan view rather than go, trying to find the section and everything that's going to give me the best view. So I'll hit my check mark. I hit edit profile, go to level one. Now, now that I can see this, I can change this to wireframe. And now I can see where the edge of my, um, the very edge of the, the door is. So this is going to go back 3 eighths of an inch and it's going to be 3 eighths of an inch over. Um, this will come up a 16th. And this is actually going to sit a 16th of an inch back inside there. And end up with something that looks a little like this detail. So the edge will give this little uh, this little solid detail here and I want to make sure that my material is set to kitchen cabinets. And I'll hit my check mark. And now that I've created this little um, profile, it'll sweep that around for me. And if I go to my 3D view, now you can kind of you can see how that detail plays out there. And then when I put my flat panel in behind that, I'll end up with basically a cope and stick um, door uh, look to it. And so now I'll go ahead and put in my flat panel for that one. Actually, I'll wait on that because I'll I'll do the, all the flat panels all at one time. I'll have them all in one um, one extrusion as opposed to doing just this one and just this one and having to go back and forth if I ever want to modify it. So now getting into the raised panel, this is kind of a little bit, I guess I would say it is the most complicated of them, but it's really not too bad. So what I want is the the panel that swoops out and sits flush with this. It's going to end up being flush with my face frame and everything. So I'm going to go to void and I'm going to do void sweep and sketch a path pick a plane just like I did with the coping stick one over there and I'm gonna draw my rectangle but this time I've got to set what the distance here is so I'm gonna say I made this one two and an eighth I believe so I'm gonna make this one the same so that way my detail starts at the same point as that and it looks at least somewhat natural even though you would never actually do this um, so now I'll go to my check mark, hit, and if this ever happens to you where you're all of a sudden it, your uh, like edit profile and stuff goes away, if you select the actual profile, um, there's by sketch and everything up here under modify sweep is where everything went. You just got stuck on the profile option, so you can hit edit profile level one. Now, what we're sketching here is different than what we were sketching over here. So here I sketch the profile of the molding that's going around there. Here I am sketching what I want to remove from the door. So we're drawing the inverse um, here. So I'm going to come down an eighth of an inch. I'm going to come 45 degrees, three eighths of an inch. I'll come over and then my actual will be like an inch. And so now I'll come in and grab that and place that there. Okay, so what I've sketched here is the profile of what is going to be removed. Uh, 
and it looks a little goofy and it can be a little tricky to at first when you're when you're trying to figure out what's being removed sometimes it's easier to draw what you want the door to look like and then go in and say okay so this is the profile of what's being removed here and then sketch that and get rid of what you've what you've drawn before so this is a standard raised panel um, maybe you've seen ones that actually have like a another little detail to them that looks something like this um, that have a little round to them some of them have even more uh, a little half like quarter round and then another cope and you know it could have any variety of details here we'll stick with our standard raised panel sort of detail and so if I hit my green check mark and then I hit a green check mark again you'll see it cuts out where um, where I drew that profile if at any point you end up with something that looks like this where you just end up with a yellow set of lines what that means is that you have a void here but it's not actually cutting anything so if I were to take this and say copy it over to another door or something like that a lot of times it will give me just this um, all you have to do is come in here and say cut geometry select the void select the piece that you want to cut and it will go ahead and cut it out so that ends up looking something like this just like a raised panel door so we've got our cope and stick We've got our raised panel, and now I'll do like a molded panel over here. So if I do a, a sweep, sketch a path, pick a plane, go in here and draw my rectangle around here, and then I go hit my check mark, hit edit profile, go to my level one. Now these are these will vary entirely by um, by what you're after so there's a thousand different options for these this sort of thing um, and depending on what company you might be buying your cabinets from whether you're making them um, or just buying a molding to apply to it uh, it can vary widely so what this profile ends up being could be anything it's entirely up to you to figure out um, what what you want this uh, molding to be uh, but for now I'm going to use something that's something like this we'll go like a beaded election mold type profile here so if I hit my check mark it'll take that profile and sweep it around and this ends up giving you a sort of molded door that looks like that um, so now I've got these kind of all in place um, if I just want to have a flat panel um, which is what I'll do with these I'm gonna go in and hit create extrusion pick a plane I'll pick my doors and I can just start drawing in all of those flat panels that go around here um, so nope that one does not get one so remember because that's a void that one's already solid all the way through so I won't end up with one for that and I can place all of this stuff in place and I know that I made basically all of these three-eighths of an inch deep so I will say these are three-eighths of an inch deep and then that's gonna be a quarter quarter inch on the inside so I'll go ahead and hit that so now all of those are in place if I make sure that these are under kitchen cabinets I've got all this taken care of so all my sweeps and everything should be what I want them to be so that looks like that's gonna be okay so if I go to manage and just so that we can see it a little better if I make my kitchen cabinets I'm gonna make them a painted white so I'm gonna replace this with the default and then say wall paint change this to eggshell spray and make it white and I'll say okay 
and then I'll hit finish model here for a second and go to my 3D view and now I've got my the face frames of my cabinets in there so that's looking halfway decent um, it's looking a lot better than the stock cabinets that come in with Revit uh, so I'm actually getting some detail into these that I would not get otherwise so now I'll come back into my edit in place and I'm gonna put in these little legs um, that go around the dishwasher and the trash roll out so these are gonna come all the way down I'll go three quarters of an inch over and if I grab one of them I can copy this over a few times. So I'll grab that one, grab that one, and then grab this one. So I should have two feet between there, which I do. And this is actually going to stick out from my face frame like a half an inch, and then it's going to go back to my toe kick and then beyond just a little bit. So I'll say three and a half inches back. So that'll s sit just like that and you don't have to do that that's just a, a custom detail that I I prefer to do um, I like the looks of it and uh, it tends to look pretty nice um, so what I'm going to do is uh, put my put my countertop in here um, and then my my toe kick and then I might do like a side panel here but then for the most part this side is pretty well uh, in hand. If I make some uh, make some like hardware and stuff, um, I can place that in as well so I can get all my knobs and handles and stuff like that in here. Um, but for now I'm going to do my countertop so I'll go to my floor plan, go to create extrusion, um, and I'm going to say there's a one inch overhang on my countertop here so I'll draw this all the way across and then pull this back to the edge here grab that and I'm going to end up with a one inch overhang on this side too and then I've got my sink here that I can use as my uh, basis for um, for where I need my cutout. So I'm going to go ahead and draw where the cutout will be for my sink hole here. And I'll just trim all of this up, clean that up a little bit. And now I know that my countertop is at three foot and my bottom of countertops at two foot ten and a half and I'll apply, create a new material, and call this uh, granite. I'm going to say OK. And I'll hit my check mark, and now you get your countertop sitting on top of there. Now, for rendering purposes, this is a pretty harsh edge. Um, usually you'll end up with a, you want some sort of edge to your like countertops and that sort of thing. Sometimes it's a decorative edge, sometimes it's just an eased edge um, that's just got a rounded edge to it so it's not so sharp. Uh, to round that over what we can do is come in hit void sweep and sketch a path and I'm just going to draw right around the very edge where the finished edges of those would be. Hit my green check mark. If I go back to this um, this view here so that I can look at the face of it. I can go into my uh, sketch here and just sketch a basically like a little eased edge to soften that edge. So now that edge looks a little bit softer, a little bit more like what it should. And I can do the same thing as a void sweep around that countertop um, count, or that sink cut out there. Um, so little details like that when you go to do a rendering that can help. Um, if you're not doing a rendering I don't know that I would necessarily take the time to do something like that. Um, so as far as if I go back to this um, view here let's say I wanted to do uh, some hardware. So I have some hardware that I've created um, before 
you can place your hardware either in this model so I could load a component in place it in the model um, or I can finish the model and then place all of that stuff um, outside of the model um, it's entirely up to you which direction you like to go with it whether you want to be able to access your hardware um, without getting into the model or not or whether you want it to kind of all be its own one thing so if you, if you consider it part of the cabinets or whether you consider it an accessory part of the cabinets, it's kind of up to you. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and hit finish model, component, and I'm going to load family, and I'm going to come in and find, so I have a whole bunch of families that I have in different, um, different kind of uh, folders here. I have hardware and fixtures, hardware and I've got a couple just basic stuff that um, that I use over and over again uh, so if I just maybe this is just gonna have knobs on it I've got two different knobs here um, depending on what look I'm after the square knob might be the one for this so I can take this and find the center point and then click this into place now how I made this is basically I made this as a new family and then this is just a generic model and it is face based so if you scroll up here generic model face based and the reason I made this a face based is because I want to be able to have it highlight different planes and click it into whatever plane I want so in some situations I want to be able to click it into this recessed part of this panel on the drawer in other situations, I want to be able to place it on the actual uh, style and rail here, like over here. So this one would go somewhere in here, and that one is sitting back in there. So I basically made this a face space model, and it gives you a plane, and then you just model this in however you want to, uh, however you want it to look, and then it detects whatever faces it is and it'll automatically place it on there so I can close this one out and then I can take these and place them wherever I want you can see I took when I built that I actually made a material parameter on the whole thing so I can actually apply um, material to all that for rendering purposes and that sort of thing so I'll call that cabinet hardware and I can apply material to that as well. So I can stick all of that sort of stuff in and get that to look um, basically how I want it to. Um, okay, so as far as cabinetry and that sort of stuff goes, that's um, a, a good start to it. Um, and for the most part, those are the, the same tools that you'll use for, uh, for pretty much all interior finishes. Um, I've uh, I've used this, those tools for, you know, you can use it for casing and baseboard. Those are just sweeps. Um, you can use it for other different types of cabinetry. It doesn't have to be just like kitchen cabinetry. It could be wall paneling. If you have like a library that's got a paneled wall, uh, you can do stuff like that. Bookcases, all of that stuff is built the same way that this, um, this was. So I'm going to go ahead and detail out the other side. Um, with our range and that sort of stuff. Uh, I have some families built for my uh, appliances and I'll just click those in. Um, but for the most part, those tools are what are going to be used to detail out a lot of the other uh, cabinet work and stuff that I'm gonna put on the interior here. So I've got my cabinet, my kitchen cabinetry on either side here. I'm gonna do a uh, set of cabinets along here and then I'm gonna do a big set of maybe a couple bookcases on either side, some cabinets down below, and then this will have something like a Murphy bed that folds down. Um, but I will get to a, I will probably model uh, something like this, get to a certain point, and then um, I'll jump back in here and show you guys how I can create a parameter that makes it so that I can select this model and click a button back and forth that'll flip um, that will flip the, the table either up or flip it down into storage uh, so that way I can I can control that and either 
fold it down and not see it in plain plan or fold it up and see it in plan or maybe I have it set so that if the table is down there's just a dashed line that shows up um, to show where the table would be if it was folded up so uh, little things like that are all things that you can kind of program into it um, when you're depending on how you want to represent all this sort of stuff so um, for now uh, that'll that should get you a pretty good start on creating your own kind of custom caseworks and cabinetry and that sort of stuff.